hello welcome to my channel my name is jane and i am currently a chemical engineering phd candidate here in new york and i am from niger, niger for life. that means i went through the whole u.s visa application process and today i am here if you watch my previous video the one i made about the u.s student visa application process i'm going to attach it up i don't know whether it's here or here so I'm, just, I'm gonna do this <laughs> i'm going to attach it up here i get the step-by-step -step process that you need to take to apply for your u.s student visa if you've not seen that video please go back and watch it but today i am assuming that you've already applied for your u.s student visa and you scheduled the date for the interview so you are here trying to find out the questions they are going to ask you and how you should answer them good job remember failure to prepare is preparing to fail but you are preparing that's why you are here so let's get right into it i have more than 20 of the questions that they will ask you listed here and we're going to be going through them one after the other and also i'm going to be giving you tips on how you should answer them so before we go into the questions i want to let you know that these visa officers are like psychologists right they're not just asking you this question because they want to hear your answer they have a goal of the reason why they're asking you this question and one of the reasons is that they want to see if you plan to go to the u.s and study and remain there or you actually plan to go study and come back what they prefer is for you to go study and come back if from the way you answer your questions they sense that your plan is to go to the u.s and not come back trust me you're going to be rejected and also they also want to see if you can afford your stay in the u.s they don't want someone that will go to the u.s and become a liability so they want to see can you afford your stay or your studies in the u.s they also want to understand your intention like i said your intention are you actually going there to study to acquire this knowledge and come back and apply it to your country or you're just looking for a way to jump <laughs> okay so these are the things they are looking out for so we're going to be going through those questions and how you should answer them the first question that i have here is what is your purpose of traveling to the u.s in your own case it is very straightforward you are traveling to the u.s to further your studies maybe in masters or phd so that one shouldn't really be a problem answering it right the next is what is your highest degree of qualification so let's assume that your own case you only have a bachelor's degree and you're going for your master's or your phd you simply say my highest degree of qualification is a bachelor's degree in mathematics but i'm going to do my master's or my phd in mathematics with focus on this just say something that make you sound smart and sound like you know what you're doing you get me okay <laughs> So the next question is, how many schools did you apply to? Now, when answering these questions, don't lie. Just tell them the truth, exactly what how it is. So in your whatever I'm going to say, just an assumption of how it is. You can say something like, I applied to eight different schools and I was admitted by five of them. I got full funding from three of them, but I decided to go to University of Tennessee. Right? cool now what did you just do you didn't just tell them i applied to eight schools you've told them that you applied to two so and so schools not only did you apply that you admitted by more than one i'm just assuming you admitted by more than one but you tried to go to this one so you want to give them more details for them to know that you actually know what you are doing now you've mentioned that you applied to more than one school right the next question they can ask you is what do these schools have in common of course for you to have applied to eight schools that means it means that they have something in common you can see something like my research interest is in the field of frying akara and these schools are one of the best schools in the u.s that do research in frying akara <laughs> so what have you done here you've told them that not only did you just apply to those schools but you have a research interest not only do you have a research interest but you apply to these schools because they they carry out research in that your, in that area that you're interested in and it just it helps to tell them okay he or she knows what he is going to do which school are you going to at this point the video might ask you for your i-20 so please when you're packing your document watch my other video don't forget anything pack everything go with all your document 
they had your document there but they're still gonna ask you um which school are you going to i'm going to university of tennessee why did you choose university of tennessee so in my case that was the question they asked me and i said University of Rochester is among the top ranking universities in the US that offer research in biofields, which is where I'm interested in. I'm also ranked among one of the best in chemical engineering in the US. Something around that, that was just what I said. So you can say something like that or try to add some maggi and pepper inside it, okay? <laughs> so the next one is, how much funding do you have from these schools? now if you don't have funding don't go and say you have funding because they have your document even if they don't have it they're going to ask you for your document if you are going to sponsor yourself it's completely fine for you to tell them do not get any funding from these schools but that you are, you are okay to fund yourself you have a sponsor your dad your uncle or whoever that is going to sponsor you remember do not lie just say it though because they have things to check to confirm all of these things so at this point the next question they can ask you is who is your sponsor so now i'm assuming you did not get any funding you're going to be paying for yourself so don't just say my dad and you keep quiet or my uncle you can say something like my uncle mr john is my sponsor he has been the one taking care of me financially since i was in high school you see now what you just do you've shown them that not only is Mr. John, Mr. John going to sponsor you, but that he has been sponsoring you for a very long time. This shows that Mr. John is capable and you have a relationship with him that, that makes it possible for him to be your sponsor. You just want to give good enough, enough details, okay? Remember, these people are like psychologists. The next question they can ask you is, what is your research interest let's say for me i'm a chemical engineer right they don't know these people don't know about chemical engineering but they're asking these questions to hear you talk to see that you know what you're going to do so you simply explain what your research interest oh my research interest is in frying a car or making puff puff and i'm interested in making puff puff because puff puff is my okay let me be serious just go do your thing sell yourself talk about your research interest another question i can ask you is why should i grant you this video? Lisa. then you start talking but my aim is to further my studies in mathematics because my life goal is to become a lecturer in nigeria and for me to become a lecturer i need to get a phd and getting this visa and going to the u.s to get this phd is my gateway of accomplishing my future goals you know something like that they can ask you what is your marital status remember do not lie if you're married it's okay tell them you're married if you're not married tell them you're not married because if you don't tell the truth and they check your details remember as you're talking they're looking through the system they're checking they're going through your details if they catch any lie they can deny you your visa not only can they deny you visa they can ban you for from ever going to the u.s from ever applying to the u.s another question they can ask you is who will you be staying with they want to see do you already have preparation like are you do you already have plans or you just want to all you have in your head is you just want to go to the u.s so at this point if you've already gotten a place to stay you tell them oh i've already paid for an apartment in two and so street in so and so place in the city or if you haven't or let's say you have somewhere you're going to stay with you say oh i have a friend who is also studying in the school so we've made an arrangement i'm going to stay with him for a couple of days or a couple of weeks before i pay for my new apartment another question they can ask you is do you have a relative in the u.s so in this case from i did a little bit of research and what i saw is that if your mom your dad your sister i mean like your immediate family are in the u.s then you have to tell them yes i have a family in the u.s my sister is in texas or you say my brother is in houston right but if if you don't have any of your immediate family if it's like extended aunties that you don't you know all those extended aunties you don't need to tell them that you have any any um i don't think you need to tell them you have any family member because you know like before you what i'm trying to say is that don't go and say yes when <clears throat> it's one of your village village aunties that is in the u.s or anything like that is not even going to affect your life as long as your immediate family members are not in the u.s tell them no but if they are tell them yes another question is do you have a professor that you would like to work with that's where the research that you've done comes in remember do your research read your sop 
because as they're talking to you they can pull up the website of the school so you're going to the department and be looking at the professors so there is no way you can say that you are going to a school for masters or phd and you don't know the name of any professor in that school I, even when you're writing your sop when you apply you must have checked they want to see these things so at this point you say like oh i'll be working with professor thomas his research is in this and this and that or you say no i currently i do not have but i have been talking to professor thomas or something like, oh, I am interested in working with Professor Thomas or Professor Jane. My research is in this and that and I've been communicating with them and just mention the name of the professors, whether you're already going to be working with them or you're just interested. They want to see that you actually know the professors in the department that you see you're going to. Good? Clear? Okay. Can you assure us that you're going to return after your studies? If you're married, awesome. You say something like, oh, that yeah, I'm a married man, I'm a married woman, and my family, my families are here in Nigeria, my kids are here in Nigeria, or my parents are here in Nigeria, and family is very important to me, so I'm definitely going to come back to be with my family. Or let's say you already have a job here. Oh, I, can't, I already have a job, but I just want to advance my skills by getting this master's or this PhD, after which I'm going to come back and continue my job. I've just say something that shows them that you actually plan to come back to the country. Remember, once they sense that your intention is not to is to not come back they're going to reject you have you been to the u.s before if you've been to the u.s whether on tourism or visitation or whatever please say you've been to the u.s don't go and say don't be thinking if i tell them i've been to the u.s before maybe they will not give me they have your details on their computer if you lie or here is your case so simply tell them the truth whether you've been to the u.s or not or if they can even ask you have you traveled out of nigeria before if you have tell them the truth i can't overemphasize this they can also ask you something like why don't you do this course in your home country so at this point, this is when you have to tell them how amazing the U.S. education system is, the state of arts, laboratory facilities, all of those good things to make, all of those good things that will make them feel good about their country, the U.S. And that's the reason why you feel is why you feel is better for you to get this degree in the U.S. and then come and apply the, the skills and the knowledge in your home country. Okay, we've gone through a couple of questions but don't just relax and say okay i know they can now i know the kind of questions that they will ask me and then that's it i want you to rehearse sit ask yourself these questions and say them out loud because one thing about interviews is that you think that you know the, the answer to a question until you're in that spot and they ask you you just see yourself stammering or you see your head just become blank these questions that i've listed try to rehearse them rehearse your answers if you will have someone that you can sit with let the person be asking you these questions and you'll be answering them by that way it will be very easy for you to just start talking once they ask you the question remember they don't have time to for you to start thinking a lot of people will be on the queue and also when you're going for your visa interview please don't go with a bag go to the um visa the u.s travel docs website when you schedule your visa and look look at the requirement the things you're supposed to go into the um embassy with there are lots of things that you cannot go with so my best you can't even go with your cell phone and things like that so my best um advice to you would be that just get a transparent bag and put your document and go with that alone don't worry about any other thing. You can go with someone. The person will have to be somewhere outside, outside far, far and wait for you while you go in and do your interview and come out. You can go with a backpack, all those things. Just go to transparent bag and your document in. I wish you the very best in your visa interview and I hope you get, um, you get a yes immediately. But I would also like to say, if you don't get a yes, don't worry. Like I said in my other video, apply again and you will eventually get it. I wish you the very best. Thank you for watching. And if you're still watching up till now, you've not subscribed, please click the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in my next video.